Tagish fell in January of 2000 in northern British Columbia. The original uh, meteor, as it was streaking through the sky, may have weighed as much as 200 tons. So it was gigantic. So it left an enormous fireball, so everyone saw it. It turned out Jim Brooke, a fellow living up there who has a hunting lodge, was driving back to his lodge across Tagish Lake. And lo and behold, out in the ice is all these little black rocks, showing great forethought. He didn't touch them with his hands. He picked them up with plastic bags and immediately put them in his freezer when he got back home. It's remained frozen ever since. And that's very important in terms of science because it may still contain frozen material from actually outer space. And this would be the first time we could actually study four and a half billion year old ice. In the spring, once the snow started to melt, a team went out and started combing the lake looking for it. And sure enough, they found lots of material. Most of it, because it's black, absorbed a lot of heat from the sun and it sunk into the ice. So they actually cut out blocks of ice and brought the big blocks back. Other cases where there was a little melt pool, they used turkey basters to slurp it out. All in all, they collected probably about 10 kilograms of material. And then they eventually had to call it quits. And that was it. Once the ice melted, it all just sank to the bottom. The material that Jim collected just shortly after it fell. That was remained frozen. That's the material that the ROM acquired, except for the one that's on display. All of our material is still at minus 80 in biological freezers here. The piece that's on display here is probably the only sizable piece you're going to see on display anywhere in the world. It's very friable. You could probably crush it with your bare hand. It's got the consistency of a charcoal briquette. So it's really remarkable that any of it survived the passage through the atmosphere. If there are still extraterrestrial ices inside the frozen pieces, then you thought they're going to evaporate and be gone. So that's what we're hoping is that we can actually thaw some of the stuff under a controlled environment, extract whatever gas has come off, and perhaps we'll sample compounds that have been frozen since the beginning of the solar system. Meteorites are inherently fascinating because they date from the beginning of the solar system, and most of them have been derived from asteroidal bodies, little tiny worlds that formed at that time, four and a half billion years ago. Meteorites, they come to the Earth, it's simple dumb luck, but even then it's a long shot because most material burns up. The shooting stars you see at night, the very bright points of light, they're probably only the size of your little fingernail. They're traveling so, so fast, they burn up almost immediately. Most of the meteorites that survive hit the atmosphere at about 17 kilometers a second. That's like going from Toronto to New York in 30 seconds. At that speed, the atmosphere is just like a brick wall. They'll lose 90% or more of their initial mass just transiting through the atmosphere. So if we're lucky, they cross the Earth's orbit, they'll survive the atmospheric entry. Uh, and again, if we're lucky, they don't fall into the ocean, they don't fall into the bush, they don't fall in the distant far north, they might be recovered as a meteorite. So it's, it's long odds to, to find them, but they do come down every day. They're virtually the only information we have from that distant time. They, they preserve information about the conditions that were prevalent in the distant past. So they're very, very fascinating, very, very precious to us.